Helen here. This is the next episode of Alpha for Families and it's the kids edition and I'm very pleased to see you, all you guys and I hope you enjoy this session. Uh, if you have a little look up you will see that is Soldier Bear. He's looking in the window and he's cuddling Sally Ann and he's saying goodbye to Sally Ann because he's off to fight COVID-19. In the meantime, we're going to go and have our alpha session. I'm going around uh, into the front door of my house and past my grapevine and to my front door. And what's at my front door? I'll show you. This is my uh, my two guard dogs, oh, and I would like some help in uh, figuring out names for them, if you could help me. Anyway, in we go. I'll have to go upstairs because everything's upstairs. Here's another friend. No, not the lady in red. Yes, this is a boy who is always in my house and he does a lot of reading. So, up we go again. Oh, another thing along the way. Hand sanitizer, please. Right, well, here we are, ready to start Alpha for Families. Well, the most fun part is with the kids. Now, I'd like you all to remember all the fun things we did together when we were at church. Uh, the first session was, who is Jesus? And uh, I'm going to have a hopping game, which will help me to remember the memory verse that we had. Here we are in the kitchen and you'll see the squares there ready for the hopping game but we'll just have a little look and see what the memory verse is going to be. Yep, you're right, it's John 3.16. I made it! So the first square says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him, that's Jesus, shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 Our second session was, why did Jesus have to die? God sent him, but he had to die. Well, remember I told you about the creation of the world and how the world got spoiled because Adam and Eve chose to disobey God and to listen to Satan. And the result of that was that Adam and Eve, represented by my hand, they had a barrier between them and God. And then all their children did as well, down every generation to me and you. But Jesus, when he came into the world, represented by this hand, he had perfectly free communication with Father God. And what Jesus did in dying on the cross was he took the weight and the sin that was on everybody, like this. So we would be free to have communion with God. And the wonderful thing is that because Jesus never sinned, he never did anything wrong, the whole of the sin problem just went poof and was gone. So now Jesus 
and we can be together worshipping God. So who remembers what the third session was about? I think you all loved that one. That was about Noah's Ark. And in this room here, there is a clue to what was going on. Have a look in. Have a look around. Okay, that's enough. There we have some of the things that Noah was going to need on the ark. And I'm sure you can remember all the other things that he needed. And you can all probably remember what those things were used for. And we had saws and we had cooking implements and we had the pumpkin and it was great fun. So Noah had a, an enormous job to do building that ark. And I, and I remember Matthew's strong arm as he sawed the wood, just like Noah would have been sawing the wood. But Noah had to have faith to build that ark. He listened to God and God told him how to build it and all the dimensions. And he, he worked for a whole year with his sons to build that huge ark. And you remember, I showed you on my phone the pictures of how big that ark was. And then we drew, uh, we did a picture, we coloured in a picture of the rainbow. And when Noah came off the ark, God gave a gift of the rainbow. There were no rainbows ever in the world before Noah came off the ark. And God put that rainbow in the sky to remind us of his faithfulness. And it reminds us that we can have faith in a God who is faithful to us. He promises to take care of us. You can see that there are seven colours. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. If you ever see a rainbow that doesn't have seven colours in it, it's not the right kind. God's kind has got seven. The number seven talks about the perfect number. It talks about wholeness and completeness. Our next session was about how and why should we pray. Ian, will you help me to demonstrate the hidden cans? Yeah. I'm sure you remember the hidden cans. Hello, hello, this is Helen calling. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was too loud, probably. But uh, uh, there's got to be a speaker and a listener in any prayer. There's got to be us doing the speaking and God listening. And then... Hello, Helen. Hello, Helen. I can hear. I can hear him talking through the tin can and the string. And so sometimes when we're praying, I do the talking and God does the listening. And sometimes he does the talking and I do the listening. Now, there's a special kind of joke, if you remember, that we use that also talks about speaking and listening. I'll, uh, I'll say the jokes to Ian. Knock, knock. Who's there? Annie. Annie who? Anything you can do, I can do better. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Alex. Alex who? I'll explain when you open the door. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Heaven. Heaven who? Haven't you heard enough of these knock-knock jokes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So anyway, I think now's the time just to pause a moment while uh, we readjust the camera. Now here's the memory verse that we did on the prayer day. But there's something missing. And I hope that you can all remember what was the missing bit. Can you read it and see if you can remember? Can you remember? Let's all say it together with this bit 
this bit is, and I will answer you. Call, Call to, to me, me and, and I will answer you, you and show you great and mighty things that you don't know. know. Jeremiah 33, 33. 3. So this verse also talks about there being somebody talking and somebody listening and responding, something, somebody doing something. Call to me and I will answer you. The next time we looked at how and why should I read the Bible? And we looked at the beginning of our special Bibles in church and we saw a whole library of books. And that library of books was grouped into different subjects. There was prophecy, there was history, there were songs, there was revelation, there were stories about Jesus, and there were 66 books all gathered into this one volume. The one that I want to look at today with you is the second letter of Paul that was written to a man called Timothy, who was a friend of Paul's. And we know where to look by 2 Timothy, Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So that's what the Word of God does. It helps to equip us, to train us, and correct us when we're going wrong and to teach us. So come over here and I've got a, a, a short version of that verse. The Word of God shows us where to walk and how to walk. walk. But it looks as though somebody's been hopping here. I think it's in the wrong order. Let's see if we can fix that. Let's start over here. No, that doesn't look right. Here's a capital letter. And it comes after this footstep. 2 Timothy 3.16 Everything This one here In the Bible 2 Timothy 3.16 Everything in the Bible is God's word. So I'll walk that while Ian films me. 2 Timothy 3.16 Everything in the Bible is God's word. I'm sure you can all remember that one. Everything in the Bible is God's word. And we know it's God's word because it's good. It produces good results and it also helps us. Here we have a picture of the boundaries and the rules that are around. And we discussed these, didn't we? Give way. Travel at 50 miles an hour. Be careful. Don't go off this cliff. Be careful, there are slips in this area. And there are other signs too, like wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, sneeze into your elbow, all those rules which are helpful for us in daily life. Now that's in the Bible, uh, we get lots and lots of useful, helpful tips on how to live a good life. I told you the story about how I became a Christian and that I had nobody to instruct me because I became a Christian alone in my own home in my own bedroom. But I had the Bible to read. I didn't look at it very much because it wasn't an easy Bible to read. And if any of you don't have an easy Bible to read, we'd like to give you one. So. Uh, if you would like to have a Bible that's easy for you to read, let your parents know and I can talk about it with them and get one to you. The Bible is very important. It tells us about what Jesus did and said. And when 
he was just about to leave earth and go and be with his heavenly father, he said to his disciples, go and make other disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to do everything I have commanded you. Now some of you children will be starting to think, I wonder if I should be baptized. And that will be because the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Now, when we did the Holy Spirit Day, the first question we asked was, who is the Holy Spirit? Well, the answer is, that we discussed, is that there are many spirits in this world. There are things that we can see and touch, like our bodies, um, and we can see those people who've got th three-dimensional bodies. But I, what I didn't show you was this book, which is called My Amazing Body. And what it says, it uh, talks to you about, I'd like to show this to you sometime a bit closer so you can see it. it, it talks about all the different things there are inside people's bodies. And this page has got a, a clear view of the bones in somebody's body. And this page has got a clear view of the arteries and veins and the blood system in the body. And this page has got a picture of the tummy, where you, or your food goes into. Now, those are all things that we can't see that actually happen inside of us, and they're all physical things but also within us there's something called a spirit which is something that you can't see can you see this picture here which is saying that inside a person is something that you can't see it's called your own personal spirit and it's by our spirits that we can communicate deeply with god and also it's our spirits, usually, that receive the touch of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the name Holy Spirit, is a name given to just one person. Because he's the one that is holy, with a capital H. And we discussed all that in the Holy Spirit Day, and I'm sure you remember it. And I've got another little picture here of... Um, you probably have seen this. Oh, oh, there's a doll. And there's another one and another one inside. So there are things inside that when it's all closed up, things inside that we can't see. Now here we are in the kitchen again. And this tray that I'm showing you is a beautiful tray that my father made. And what it's showing you is obviously a yacht. And yachts are boats that get their power, the way they go through the waves, the way they skim along the water, from, they get their power from the wind. And the wind is one of the pictures in the Bible, one of the word pictures that talks about the Holy Spirit. But the interesting thing about yachts is that it's a pulling power, not a pushing power. And the Holy Spirit is not a person who pushes us or forces us but he invites us and he draws us closer to God. Another picture that we know about is a picture of water and ice and, and steam. And I think you'll be able to see the steam in this can you see the steam? Anyway, we, we talked about it during our Holy Spirit Day. And I just wanted to, you to remember the Holy Spirit is God. And God is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But all of the same stuff, just like the ice, the water, and the steam. But let's go into the bedroom now, and I'll remind you of another thing we did on the Holy Spirit Day. Okay, come on in. Huh. 
here's, uh, here's where Soldier Bear lives. And there's Sally Ann, it's because she's got her leg dangling there a bit. But what I really wanted to show you in here was this little bird. Now, Kara, if she's watching this, Kara knows all about mother hens holding their chicks under their wings because Kara has got hens at home. And here is the little feather. And this little feather is one that came off the angel wings that Ella was wearing during our Holy Spirit Day. And remember, we prayed, played some gentle music and you lay in bean bags and I prayed over you and I took the angel wings and I just stroked your hands with the feathers. So that, and we were talking about sometimes how we, we are anxious or um, concerned about something like at the moment things can be a bit scary with the COVID-19 problem the virus that everybody's talking about so I was encouraging you to lie down on uh, when you go to bed at night and just to relax and not and to let all your worries go to God and then just be quiet and think about the day and give everything that you're worried about to God. And sometimes you might just feel his touch like a little feather and you might sense his presence in your heart. When bad things happen and uh, grown-ups will have no doubt talked to you about war or you might understand a bit about how grown-ups fight wars, this is a soldier. Remember how we used soldiers with their parachutes? And this is a tank gun, or like a cannon. It's called, it's called a cannon. And um, those are the, the solid and uh, hurting things that people do to each other. That things have gone wrong in this world, and that's why wars happen. But when things go wrong in our lives, what we need to do is to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to take up the sword of the Spirit. The Bible talks about the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. And so when we are afraid, we say, the Bible says, I don't ever need to be afraid. God says, don't be afraid in the Bible 365 times. That's one for every day of the year. And when we say, God said, don't be afraid, so I don't need to be afraid. The other thing is using your shield of faith. When frightening things happen, you can say, I trust in God. And the frightening thought has to go away because you are exercising and using your shield of faith. God is good and God is big and he's able to protect us. And when we believe that, that's faith. Now I've got a story to tell you about our little family. My husband Ian and I were on a train station in Amsterdam in a country called Holland far away. He was four years old, my little boy at that time. and. We were standing beside the train, the train's door was open, and we were talking with a lady, can we buy a ticket on the train? And we didn't see our little boy slip into the train. He thought, yes, this is definitely the train we're going on. And then suddenly, bang, the doors closed and the train went out of the station. Whoosh! It was a high speed train. And my husband and I were very frightened because our boy was going very fast and we didn't know where he was going, where the train would stop and what would happen at the end. So we rushed to the station manager and he helped us. He rang the, uh, he was able by phone to contact the engine driver and the engine driver 
contacted a man who was taking the tickets and he found Jonathan and we then jumped onto the next train which was a slow train that stopped at every station and we were quite upset and f feeling anxious about our son. When we finally were reunited with him, we stepped out of the slow train and there he was holding the station master's hand on this platform and we hugged him and said, are you all right? And he said, of course I'm all right. I didn't need to be afraid because I was trusting that Jesus would look after me. And now we come to the last subject. The grown-ups last week did a talk, uh, listened to a talk about guidance. That's how God speaks to us today and tells us what to do in our lives. And we, uh, the children, children's group in Alpha, we've already learned about that in a way because we get guidance from the Bible. We get guidance as we listen to the Holy Spirit. We get guidance as we pray and listen to God in our daily lives. Now, one important thing is being willing to obey. And that's something that you'll need to exercise while you're in what they call lockdown. Now, that sounds like a bit of a scary name to me. <coughs> it's just basically isolation. It's keeping ourselves away from places and people that might have a virus. <coughs> we don't want to be uh, in places where people are coughing over us. <coughs> and I don't know why this tickle has come in my throat right at this moment, but there, I think that's over. So while we are in isolation, remember to trust God and enjoy this time with mum and dad and with God. And also remember who you are. Who are you? Do you remember? Well, when we trust in God, when we invite Jesus into our lives, we become what is called born again. We, we get born into, into a new family, the family of God. We've got our own natural family and we've got the family of God. So, God, who is the King of Kings, has some new children because of you attending the Alpha course and uh, uh, asking Jesus to come and live in your hearts. And I want you to see these pictures that are on the computer here because there, there's a picture here, uh, one of a boy and one of a girl, and the words that go with it are, when things get tough and I start to be afraid, I remember who I am and I straighten my crown. They've got, each of them have got a crown. It's because they're a prince and a princess. So remember, when things get tough, remember who you are. You're a child of God and as such, a prince or a princess. Now, just in closing, I want to give you three things that you can do during the isolation time. Mum and Dad uh, might still have the booklet that I gave called the Bible app, the Book of Hope. And here is the, um, the website where you can get it. It's called BibleAppForKids.com And that would be a fun thing for you to play on during, if your, your parents allow you to onto the computer. The next thing is Courage for the Journey. Here's a picture that Ella drew. And this is a suitcase. And we didn't know it when we started the Alpha course, but we would need courage for the journey. And this is what Ella drew when we talked about that. And here's one for you. Another picture which you can think about with the label Courage for the Journey. 
Courage for the journey through this COVID-19 crisis, this virus problem. And when we think about what we might need for the journey, we can draw pictures about what we might need or write words and that sometimes can be a help if we if we do the drawing like that and the last thing is a game which I want to show you so you get a balloon and you put it between your knees and you hold your ankles and you have a a race with mum or dad or your brother or your sister and to try and get from one place to the other. And um, Ian, you'll be able to time me how fast I'm going and follow me. I didn't get very far holding my ankles. Can you do better than me? Please try and do better than me. I was hopeless. And oh, one more thing, I forgot. I'm, uh, I've made a plan about uh, reading you some stories over the Holy Week time. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I'll be getting that ready tonight and have it ready for Monday. The first one ready for Monday. And th that'll tell you the story of what happened to the Hebrew nation when they were stuck in bondage in Egypt and how they came out. And it tells the story of the Passover. And there will be an opportunity to have a Passover meal on Thursday night because that was the meal that Jesus ate, the Last Supper it's called, before he died on the Friday morning. And that's what is happening in the year, in the church year, as we remember these events. So uh, if your parents want to have a look on the website to have a look and see what needs to be prepared for the Passover meal, that'd be great. And I'm sure you would enjoy it. There's a special one for kids, a special Passover service for kids. Uh, but even if you don't have the meal, there's always the stories, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Bye. Bye again. See you again. <laughs>